Hi, everyone. Dr. Liz here. The iTunes app doesn't always show all the shows that are on a podcast, particularly when you get over 100, which I'm far past that now. So I thought from time to time I'd run some best of replays because I think the information is still really good. And I want to make sure that people hear it. So let's jump into this one. Have a wonderful day. Today's episode is an interview with Stacey Horn, who's a certified hypnotist right outside of Vail, Colorado. And I had interviewed her for an upcoming episode on hypnosis and childbirth that's coming out in February. And she started talking about how she stopped smoking with hypnosis. And it was so fascinating that I thought it would make a great episode all on its own. Particularly in January, one of the most common New Year's resolutions that people make is to stop smoking. So I thought, all right, let me give you a little help with this. Let me give you a little boost in terms of hearing someone else's experience and how they stopped. And also to know that hypnosis is a really, really good option to help you stop smoking, to help tobacco cessation. I always feel like I'm saying sensation instead of cessation. (laughs) So I'm saying cessation, C-E-S-S-A-T-I-O-N. So let's just get that out of the way. You can also hear my southern accent come out, tobacco, put down the tobacco, right? (laughs) He said tobacco cessation. Anyway, back to the point. If you try to stop on your own, the research on this is that stopping on your own has about a 5% success rate. That's really low. Behavior therapy itself, just standalone behavior therapy, is about a 25% success rate. Doing it with tobacco replacement products is about a 25% success rate. And hypnosis varies anywhere from 20% up to 88%. The 20% are more like a, a single session that people try to do, and that's it. Now, it can happen in a single session. I had someone in my own office who did it in a single session. But the research on this, which are, again, we're going to review on a future episode, is that when you're getting up to like three to six sessions with follow-up, you have a much higher success rate and you're starting to hit that percentage between 60 and 80%. So let's get to the interview. Here's Stacy. You were a smoker. Yes. And then you used it to stop smoking in 2000. Well, I... That was my first effort with mm-hmm. it, and I stopped for six months, and then I was crazy enough to decide that I wanted to be a smoker more than a non-smoker at uh-huh. that point. So, <laughs> so tell uh, me, why? Like, Because I think a lot, of, I'm asking because a lot of smokers and who become non-smokers have that experience, like know yeah. somehow this is better. So can you tell me a little bit about that thought process? I... To the best of my knowledge, I think I just at that time didn't have uh, skills that would help me relax enough in situations that I could use at the time. I could teach them to other people, but I wasn't applying them to myself. I tried a couple other different methods to stop smoking at that point as well. And when I... Which other methods? um, I used cigarettes. I don't know if anyone even remembers that one. Uh Uh, What is that? It's a uh, it's lobelia extract, and back in the well, in the eighties, it was on TV like at three o'clock in the morning. Cigarettes, <laughs> um, that and uh, this is your brain on drugs commercial, which had the fried egg and uh huh yeah and they probably those, followed each other right yeah uh, absolutely <laughs> absolutely those two were in inextricably tw- entwined in my yeah. mind. Uh-huh. I stopped again using the, the self hypnosis. Um, for another six months and went back, Mm -hmm. which is really crazy. But um, I finally stopped the day I got married in 2005. So after 25 years of smoking, Mm -hmm. that was the reason um, I wanted to be a non-smoker more than I wanted to be a smoker at that Mm -hmm. point. Was your partner a smoker or a non-smoker? Absolutely a A non-smoker. It was a deal breaker. It was. Wow. Yep. So how was that put to you? If you don't mind sharing that. Oh, no. He, he just said, I, you know, this is what I want with you, but the smoking, it can't, I don't want that as a part of my life. And I realized that 
I wanted the life with him so much more than I wanted the smoking. Mm -hmm. And so when I do work with people around tobacco cessation, that's kind of how I approach it with them. What do you want more? Do you want to be smoking or is there something, the healthy lifestyle that you want as a result of being a non-smoker? Yeah. So can you tell me about when during this period of like on, on and off, right? Can you tell me like what, what were the hardest days when you said, okay, this person is more important to me than being a smoker. Like, did you go through withdrawal? Was it easier every time you tried to stop? Was it harder? Can you tell me about that process? It, it was easier every time. Um, I think by the time I finally stopped, which was in 2005, um, I was more easily using the techniques of relaxation and stress management. I was doing more focused breathing. I was seeing myself as a non-smoker. And mm. I think that's one wonderful thing that happens with hypnosis is people go from I'm trying to stop smoking to I'm a non-smoker. Mm -hmm. Were you using the hypnosis files like on and off during that time? Yes. You were? Yes, I was. Okay. So uh did you go and see someone and then they sent you home with hypnosis to listen to? Or was it like you saw this person a, multiple times over a couple of years? It, it was a clinic that I went to in Phoenix. Uh -huh. And I went um, a couple of times initially. And they gave me a whole set of, of cassette tapes. <laughs> That's uh -huh. how long. Um, to take and practice with myself. And I periodically use them. I never went back to that um, clinic or went to anyone. I just used the tapes. Interesting. So you found the tapes helpful even years later. You're talking five years later, really. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I did not. I didn't use them real thoroughly um, or consistently, but I, I think it truly reinforced me going from I'm tr I'm trying to stop smoking everyone's trying to stop smoking to mm -hmm. I'm a non-smoker it's just something I used to do mm -hmm. yeah so you feel like once you finally made that shift you were able to do it yep to really see yourself that way yeah I do the same thing when I do hypnosis like a large part of the hypnosis is actually talking about the person as a non-smoker already. Like the minute they come into my office, they're a non-smoker and really instilling that belief in them. Yeah, that's that was the shift that needed to happen. Yeah, very interesting. And then teaching also the, the other skills. So you're saying, you know, in that time period where it was on and off, you had learned some more stress management skills, basically, so that smoking didn't have to fulfill that need in you anymore. Yeah. And I, I changed circumstances in my life at that point as well, which only supported the changes that I was intent on making. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's um, after I smoked for 25 years and I've been a non-smoker now for 11. So it uh, gives me great pride to know that my daughter will never know me as a smoker. Wow, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Kids are a great motivation as our partners, our loved yes. ones, really. Yeah. And it, it motivates me so much as far as when I'm doing um, tobacco cessation work with people, because I know it, I get it. I know all the excuses and all the stories that we tell ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I'm certainly a success story for tobacco cessation. Absolutely. So do you ever get a craving? Do you ever get triggered even, you know, 11 years later? No, no. And it's, it's funny up here. People are really healthy here in the mountains, mm -hmm. hypothetically. But boy, there are a lot of closet smokers. I do notice <laughs> that when I'm walking through parking structures or even just walking out in, in the open when I smoke wafts my way. I'm just so attuned to it. I, I really fight myself not wanting to give people my business card saying, if you're, <laughs> when you're ready to <laughs> give this up, because I, I know I hated it um, all the time that I smoked, but uh -huh. um, that'd, be a little, that'd be a little pushy. So <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. yeah, I think smokers often talk about this deep self-hatred 
that goes on. I know was, I, I try to address that in hypnosis. Like, let's shift that. Like, what a horrible state to be in. Like, deep uh, self-hatred. Like, how wonderful yeah. it would be to be in self-love and self-respect. Exactly. And it's that it was a, you know, part of the shame core that there's something wrong with me that I, that I'm doing this, but there's something wrong with me that I can't stop. Yes. And um, I think that was, kept me stuck for a while, kept me trying to Mm -hmm. stop smoking as opposed to just being a non-smoker. So were you doing some work, some psychological work, whether on your own or with a therapist around the shame core in those intervening years? Honestly, I had done quite a bit before that, but it wasn't till that point in those years that I really started connecting the the shame core with the tobacco use. Hmm. For some reason, those didn't quite connect for me until I really started looking at it and going, okay, I know what this is. Something's wrong with me that I keep doing this. Mm -hmm. So it was once I got that piece that connection that I was able to apply the tools that I knew to, mm-hmm. to help myself move through it, you know, just like any addiction, um, that it was, it was a thought process. It was, there was some chemical component mm-hmm. to it. Yeah. And I had to put those pieces together before that could end. Yes, yes. Really interesting. So what do you advise people in those first, um, I think it's only 48 hours? Is yep. it that the actual physical addiction is there and then it's gone? It's only two days. Yeah. Yeah, it's so short. And people are really surprised to know that. They don't even really know that, a lot of smokers. Like, oh, if you can make it two days, then really we're talking about a psychological addiction, not a physical. So what do you advise your clients who are coming in for hypnosis for tobacco cessation, what do you advise them in those first couple of days to do? I advise them to, one of the reinforcers I build into the hypnosis is that anytime you have an urge to smoke, you'll have a tall glass of cold water, Mm -hmm. especially up here because dehydration causes so many problems that because we're at uh, 9,000 feet up here. Yeah, very dry. So so it's very dry. So I reinforce the need to use lots of clear, clean water Mm -hmm. to flush out anything that's remaining in their body, as well as to replace the empty hand syndrome (laughs) with with lots of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I talk about the empty hand syndrome, too. That's really a, a struggle for people often. It doesn't have to be though. It's no. like there's there's plenty of us walking around that figure out what to do with our hands without a cigarette. Yes. Right? And, and part of what I talk <laughs> and, to them empty about. Empty hands is, means relaxation. Yes. <laughs> and to notice that, like, oh, notice yeah. what people are doing with their hands in just a normal day to day. Yeah. So cool glass of water, anything else? Breathing. Mm-hmm. I, I like to recommend um, breathing into the count of four, holding for the count of seven, and exhaling for the count of eight, Mm -hmm. Um, doing that three or four times, um, and explaining that begins to gear the brain down into the alpha waves, which is where relaxation and hypnosis occur anyway. Yes, I love the four-eight breath. I teach the four-eight breath as well, and and taught it for a long time in um, prenatal yoga that I taught. And it's really a yoga breath. It's an ancient yoga breath. But it's I think it's so helpful for smoking because smoking is deep breathing, right? It's, it it's is. Hold, it breathe is. in, hold, exhale. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, I have worked with people here in Colorado to apply that to ceasing cannabis use as well. There have mm-hmm. been a couple people who've come who found it to be problematic for them. And I think even more so the the holding the breath um is has been attached to that for for the people that I've worked with in that area. Yes, absolutely. And I'm sure I'm in Florida, and it was just legalized here. We're recording this at the end, very end of 2016. And I know I'm going to start to see that in my practice is Mm -hmm. stopping cannabis use if it becomes problematic for somebody's life. I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure you will see it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So 
Okay, so deep breathing, the cool <laughs> glass of water, anything else, like any kind of third tip for people who may be listening to this and saying, okay, I want to go get hypnosis, or I want to try this on my own. I want to download yeah. one, and and but I need skills to get through those first couple of days. I Well, I think for myself, just that shift to reminding myself and, and offering affirmations to people that you aren't trying to stop smoking anymore. You are a non-smoker. When you walk out of the office, you are a non-smoker once and for all. Mm -hmm. So making that shift mentally. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your experience around being a smoker for many years and then being a non-smoker and what that was like for you and how hypnosis truly helped you over over a period of years really to become yeah. the non-smoker that you wanted to be yes almost the best gift that hypnosis has ever given me besides my daughter <laughs> <laughs> awesome what an incredible interview with stacy horn like what a journey she had from being a smoker to a non-smoker like it took her years to do that but she said when she was ready, she was ready. And, you know, sometimes that does happen for people. Like we always wish as hypnotherapists that it happens in those first couple of sessions. It does happen for an incredible percentage in like one to three sessions. But for other people, it takes time. It takes really getting to their shame core and it takes getting to what is more important to me than smoking. So if you're local to Broward County, I absolutely do smoking cessation in my office. Like, come see me. Let's get it started, right? Let's go for it. Let's help you transform into the non-smoker that you want to be. You can see details about that on my website, drlizhypnosis.com. Just email me through that and schedule an appointment and I am happy to help you transform. It is truly exciting to me to have someone come in and see them transform. Like it really is. Okay, so the little rattling you heard in the background there is the dog. I gave her like a peanut butter container to finish off, you know, when there's just like scrapings in there and she's going to town on it. So <laughs> I hope you dog lovers enjoy that. All right, people, I'm out. Peace. Want free hypnosis files or to learn more about Dr. Liz, her books, products, and services? Head over to drlizhypnosis.com to get in on all the great resources. If you liked this episode, do Dr. Liz a favor and rate, review, and subscribe over at iTunes. Or better yet, tell a friend about the podcast so we can continue to grow our amazing audience. Lastly, be sure to send in your feedback to Dr. Liz at drlizhypnosis.com. That's D-R-L-I-Z at drlizhypnosis.com. We love to hear from you.